Hey, Daniel. Hey, how you doing, Shannon? Oh, I'm doing you? okay. How have you been? Really good. It's been a, it's been a crazy time, but pretty pretty great. Yeah. Oh man, I feel like it's been a while since you and I have been in a meeting together. It has been, yeah. <laughs> how are things going there? Pretty good. I've been uh, um, doing some stuff on software engineering with VT. Nice. Um, and I think comm meetings kind of stopped happening. Um, so what have you been doing? Yeah, it's been it's been a bit bonkers. There's been a lot of the sort of um, external side of things, trying to get things going there. And then working a little bit on trying to get sort of some of just our basic, or just our, our basic things set up. So it's great. I see Bianca's coming on. So working with Bianca and a few people to try to get our skills stuff working better so that so that um, getting uh, tasks matched to potential helpers is, is a little bit more uh, active. Hey, Bianca, I was just talking about what we were working on. Um, yeah, and then just trying to trying to, to figure out sort of some of the, the big picture stuff with folks. But uh, other than that, it's been a lot of, of my my other work. Um, and this last week has been also a whole bunch of family stuff. It was my uh, my youngest son's birthday. So various things kind of as, as lead up to that. Oh man, your youngest son's birthday. Well, that's exciting. Yeah, that was good. All of that stuff actually sounds exciting. I'm glad Bianca's here too. Um, I don't know if we're gonna have a highly attended meeting today yeah. because there was a poll and it yes. seems like there were maybe a few people who wanted to, it might, maybe it was you guys actually, uh, maybe a few people who wanted to discuss stuff and uh, a bunch of other people who said they would update the document uh, on their own. Um, I think Archer is going to be here, but he said that I can uh, continue to, to ring lead for uh, the moment. And yes, uh, this call is being recorded, so I don't think there's any good reason to not discuss what you guys came to discuss because we can post this later and people can catch up if they want to. And that's great. And just as, as one piece of background, we're probably going to stop doing those polls. And of course, people don't have to come to any of the calls, but we're, we're actually trying to, to, to revive the calls a little bit and have those be something that we're getting more people on and, and getting, getting some energy energy there as well. So thank you for, for keeping that kind of moving. But, and we're, and we're going to stop probably having, having Tyler put those polls out because it does mainly tell people, like, don't come. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, I, I I know it was a thing that we were trying out. I think I missed the discussion where where it was an idea that was proposed, and I kind of got it because I know not not all of the the daily calls are equally substantive and and sure. uh, so forth, because um, we have them daily, so <laughs> it's a lot. Yeah. But um, oh, good. We're getting some people. Hi, Dan. <laughs> we saw him for a second. Um. Well, normally we would start, I guess, with um, round robin team lead updates. I only see Dan uh, in terms of team Hello. lead. Hi, Dan. Do you want to do you want to give a vaccine team update as long as you're here? Uh, sure. Are we waiting for anyone else, like Archer or anyone? I think Archer's going to join. Uh, I don't know why he hasn't joined yet. So I I, don't, I think it's going to be a lightly attended meeting. So I, I we could wait a couple more minutes, but I'm not sure if there's a lot of point. Okay. Um, yeah, I can go if you want. You want to record that, Shannon? I think we're not recording. Um, it does say it's recording, so I think oh, we're cool. I think we're good. Um, okay, so give VT updates. Yes, please. Okay, so I, the the biggest one I would say is that um, the contradictory claims team that Malavika is leading, um, they're starting to get some annotators on board to start annotating for uh, training for contradictory claims. So like pairs of paper that have different claims, whether or not they agree with each other or contradict each other. Um, so we're getting the annotators on board there. Um, with adverse drug reactions, uh, Aradna has started to extract context for when some of the adverse drug reactions are being mentioned. So we need to look into that more uh, to understand which drugs are associated with those drug reactions and if we can parse those um, automatically. Um, let's see. With the immunology team, so Nick Webb and Siddhartha Mitra have made already kind of like a, like an MVP, very bare bones, kind of like a genome browser type of a thing. And we're going to add annotations for different epitopes on top of that. So they've made this nice first pass of that. 
Um, and additionally with Alexi, we're thinking about how to add like a knowledge graph component about to that to think about like systemic implications of a mutation specifically because we're thinking about different mutations in the viral genome. Um, so yeah, kind of good, just uh, first steps in that project. And then with the engineers team, um, June and Shannon have been working on documentation and refactoring the round one code. So I think we're making good progress there. So yeah, there's fun stuff here. happening this weekend. Yeah. That's what I got. Great. Um, wonderful updates. Very excited to hear about all of the other subtasks that I've missed out on for a while. Um, <laughs> let's see. Um, I'm not recognizing everyone else and their roles on teams. Um, is there anyone else here who wants to give an update? Bianca, do you want to talk like, maybe, maybe briefly about what we're working on in terms of getting the, the skills and needs stuff going? Uh, yeah, sure. So um, I have taken the taxonomy that Daniel started and uh, extended that with all the self-declared skills that we got from uh, people's registration forms. Um, there is a nice visualization of that in the state it's in now. Um, I think it's it's already insightful. It needs, still needs a lot of work in terms of getting more organized and granular and probably a whole lot of things are not classified correctly, but it will always be a work in progress. And what we're doing next is take that taxonomy and link it back up with the people again. So we can set up a bit of a CRM system, which we're trying out at the moment. Um, and then hopefully in the next step, we'll change the registration form so that new details will be entered there directly. And then we can search it very easily for people with specific skills. Um, on the one hand, if we are looking for specific skills, and on the other hand, we have the, the nice visualization to just browse and see the wealth of skills that uh, the community already has and, and find interesting people through that way. That is pretty exciting. I have a follow-up question to this personally. I, I have been trying sort of off and on to um, connect with um, some folks working on this to improve the, um, the data storage process of our registration. So right now we, we get people filled into a nice spreadsheet, but then getting them into the Google group is a manual process currently. Yeah. And I have I've a, been a hoping to change update. that. I have a quick update on uh, finally a, a way to get uh, away from the sheet. And uh, basically we're trying to move the sheet into a database, which we already have on Google Cloud. And then that will enable us to route signups into database versus a sheet. And then we can basically hook up different things to automate the Google Groups much much easier than from Sheets. Great. Hopefully it happens this week. Okay, so, so just to confirm, when this is DBified, then it's going to be auto-linked to the Google Group. Yeah. And we, we are, of course, making sure that um, as part of that coding process that the limits of the Google, Google Group are going to be observed. I hope. <laughs> okay, they're pretty high, but I'm just saying like this is like what we're gonna fall asleep and forget about it We're gonna hit like a hundred thousand people or something and then it's gonna like break everything um, Maybe yeah, so, yeah, This maybe. is one thing let's, I wanted to let's make Let's sure. wait for it to happen. That's gonna be a, quite an awesome event um, That would be pretty but, cool yeah. um, and, and the side effect of that would be obviously being able to put up uh, a list of people on the website and uh, move closer to that interconnected I, interconnector idea that we had to have Bianca figure out a way to actually connect people in a more efficient way and finally build some some exciting uh, stuff on top of it because we already have so much data about members and we're able to extract even more um, we should reach out to Andrea and figure out if she, if she can um, help us with extracting more of the LinkedIn skill stuff because that will immediately enrich our database tenfold and that will help with a lot of, um, you know, connection pieces. And I just wanted to mention on, on that note, just because I love, I love credit where credit's due is that, is that while I've been building a little bit on the taxonomy, that that's building off of the work that was uh, Andrea and Frangis in putting that piece together. The other piece I wanted to mention is that 
the, the little sort of sunburst in graphic that we get from it right now um, is, is proof of concept. And the key thing that's there is that it's us beginning to use observable, which for any of the folks who are interested in playing with data visualization and who aren't total power BI heads, it's a, it's a great way to go because we can mix and match and tweak stuff that's already out there really easily and sort of bring it over to, to our own usage. And it's all based off of D3, so it's, it's pretty powerful. Okay. I have uh, reached out to Andrea via Slack. I don't know if that's the best way to reach her um, or if there's another way because so far I haven't heard back, but absolutely I want to see what Maybe she LinkedIn. has done before and what she can do potentially with LinkedIn. Yeah, I think LinkedIn is the place and she's very active on LinkedIn. Great. Okay. Actually, just for my own personal interest, um, I haven't like heard from or worked with uh, Andrea or uh, Frankie's in it in a little while now are they are they still actively engaged Frangis is actually uh, she reached out to me about the funding uh impact investing angle that we're trying to explore with audrey and ogali so i think Frangis uh, is to be re-engaged in a much more productive manner than we tried to engage her before uh which you know is a, f a funding and like uh all all those uh, crazy complex things that she's actually an expert so again, it's amazing to see how we're able to re-engage people finally with some very specific and relevant things because before it was mostly like do what you can and do what, what should be done, but not necessarily do what you're best at. And we're slowly reaching that, uh, you know, uh, point and crossing the chasm of this uh, chaos to be organized. All right, that's exciting. Um, at some point, I should probably catch up to figuring out uh, what you guys are doing for funding uh, because I was hoping to do something for that as well involving the company where I work. So I can, I guess, start out by trying to find out what the requirements are for them to do matching. Um, but I dropped that some time ago because the first feedback I got was like, we need forms from you that you don't have. Um, but maybe now we're going to have them. So, um, yeah, I, I, yeah. And, I, and I would like to check in. <laughs> there are two angles that we're exploring. And the first one is um, related to the fact that it's actually, it's going to be very hard to fund Corona Y, but it will be very easy to fund projects that come out of Corona Y. And that, in a way, that paradox, um, we're trying to solve it, was creating funding.coronay.org where there will be a list of initiatives, projects uh, that, you know, uh, could be interesting for, you know, Intel or other companies to support, be it through actual like uh, cash or actual services or, uh, you know, pro bono uh, stuff or even like even allocating resources as Google and Amazon did for us. So essentially that's nice. going to be a central um, place where maybe Corona Y will be an, a project itself in terms of just um, a vehicle to support all the other amazing ideas. And we can also kind of highlight and explore on that funding side. We've done a little bit, but uh, sort of CGI is our first example of a company that is donating <coughs> uh, employee time. So, you know, they're, they're helping Liam be here and helping with security stuff. And so I'm hoping we can sort of shout that from the rooftops. There are a couple more, including oh, uh, governments uh, funding uh, people, but we're not yet uh, able to, to disclose that. Right. <laughs> so we, we officially have financial support from organizations uh, paying our employees, but we don't really have employees and they're not really uh, paying them through us in any way, but it's it's exciting because it's an ex external validation that proves that we're doing something, um, you know, to be useful. And it takes a leap of faith, uh, obviously, uh, to define that uh, future usefulness. But again, like just the fact that people and organizations are willing to support us in that way, which is way more uh, of a commitment than just saying, hey, like we're sure your Facebook post or things like that. All right. Wow. Very cool. Um, so let's see. I, I think 
uh, Yason, I'm sorry if I'm messing up your name. Um, <laughs> uh, we are getting, uh, so it, it, those of you who are reading the chat see that uh, he's having some mic trouble, but he's uh, giving giving a nice update for task risk. I apologize that I uh, am not matching your name and your team correctly. Uh, so uh, they have a basic classifier to filter out irrelevant papers and are waiting for the pipeline to run on MongoDB um, to extend the ngrav search to UML's, uh, UML syn synonyms. And so now we have that in the video as well. Um, and I don't, is, is there anyone else here from uh, RISC or GEO or TIES who can speak to updates? I think Do not we today. Have Isaac, uh, provided an update. Yeah, I'm here. Yeah, okay. I can give an update on what we're doing. So we've recently been training um, and trying to leverage various forms of transfer learning. So we're still getting those results. Um, also, was talking with Sergey. Um, and he's going to contact one of his epidemiologist friends to try to help us more on the epidemiology side. So that would be really good. Um, and, and yeah, we've started to, yeah, get some people working on our data pipeline to at least make it so we get access to our data. So yeah, those are the main updates. Nice. Okay. Um, so is there any, uh, I think that that covers most of the folks who are here from, from the major teams. Archer, did you have anything additional that you wanted to bring up today? Not really. I mean, those two big things that uh, we're working on in terms of the uh, funding uh, angle, the actual sustainability of Corona Y, uh, and like making sure that we re-engage people and uh, routing people to the right things. I think onboarding is also something we should revisit as communications team and figure out, and, and maybe Tyler could take this on, but making sure that we automate as much as possible to the extent of even creating a chat bot in Slack that would automatically route people to the right channel based on their uh, words um, and, and tags and, and skills. Nice. That's it. Okay. Um, I actually have a question now that I'm thinking about it. Um, actually, Jun brought this up from our sort of a, our forming software engineering team on VT. Um, we so Dan, Dan can corroborate what I'm saying, but essentially we're we're discussing this issue of what this code is going to be like when it's productized, um, and sort of envisioning the end product as a, a web dashboard for all of the various <laughs> subflows that exist right now but aren't currently connected in in one flow. Um, so Joanne has been asking the question a lot, what, what um, stack are we going to use to actually create a long-term supported dashboard and moving sort of the idea moving away from Power BI? Um, he asked me, hey, do you have any ideas for that? And I said, well, no, this is not something I have experience with. But I had this idea that other people have been already trying to answer this question and maybe yeah. it would be a good thing to bring up to the group. Yeah, and I think uh, we, we have to understand that different people come from different backgrounds and professional experiences. So there is no definitive way on uh, kind of saying what stack will be, but we should treat every piece of our system as a, kind of a black box with um, interfaces that we communicate with each other because it's impossible to understand what what's happening in you know patient forecasting something you know transfer learning model and things like that but uh isaac is able to provide an interface that you know we can query and basically you know e expose that in some way on our website or in the unified unified dashboard or this kind of discovery engine platform where uh doctors will ask like so what's the you know estimated number of um you know cases in brazil uh in 30 days and boom like it it, it works you know it doesn't matter where it, it comes from it doesn't matter who created it it's essentially the unified system that uh that connects all pieces together while 
providing full traceability and ability to explain why that result came in um, also as as a you know core piece of the system because again we we can't risk exposing some dashboard that predicts uh, I don't know like number of cases without being uh, crediting the actual explainability of the system because you know someone from Brazil comes to this dashboard and makes an executive decision based on that and you know uh, lots of bad things happen and you know that decision could be wrong and we we cannot risk any of that so it's it's a time to also involve lawyers and to understand what is the right language to use and how to include explainability in that language and I clearly defined that you know the the outputs of a ISEC system are dependent on this data and this data comes from there and this model comes from here and these are assumptions that uh, patient forecasting team was working on when creating it so it it may be all completely wrong so please use it with your you know conscious uh, uh, judgment uh, those are just you know, that is just data for you to derive knowledge from. And everyone's great with that also is the more we have it so that, you know, any of that that's coming from either, you know, an, an ontology or the specific formula that are being used, um, plus those citations of where the data is coming from, the more that stuff's exposed, the more it helps us crowdsource better, <laughs> this better data in any of those pieces. So that someone maybe on there is an epidemiologist looking at the thing, well, okay, yeah, this you're using this database, but that database is kind of crap. So maybe consider looking at this one or whatever it might be. Yeah, and when it comes to the the actual representation of, of the um, uh, information, we, we should uh, clearly define that we're not connecting the dots. We're putting the dots on the map for researchers or policymakers or any other individuals to connect the dots. And that's, I think, a good analogy to use here. And we're able to build systems and we should be able to build systems that bubble up and reduce uncertainty in the environment, even in terms of the core 19 data set. But we're not here to tell what's right or what's wrong or what decisions should be made. Yes, that does seem important. I, I do love that it's being, the, the idea of traceability is being addressed because if I were to use such a product and I got a result, I wouldn't want it to be blind. I would always want to know the quality of results, at least cursorily. Um, so thank you for highlighting that as a priority. Um, follow up question, I guess, again, uh, if we're on a sub team such as VT and we're looking to integrate with the discovery engine, at what point is that an appropriate discussion? Probably in like two weeks from now, I, I okay. feel like, because there is barely any meaningful structure right now. And it's still a conceptual idea that uh, starts to resonate, but it, it is yet to be defined. Mostly because the purpose of this discovery engine is to, um, you know, if, to be able to find things you don't know exist, and discovery engine is such thing. And it's a paradox of not knowing what that is, but we're in the process of reducing uncertainty and being, you know, every day closer to what, what that will be. And again, it's up to us as uh, conscious operators of this uh, system to define what it will be. And hopefully it will be uh, a very useful tool for researchers and medical professionals and other people in, in the ecosystem. Which brings me to another point that I forgot. We're trying to reincarnate our podcast. And we had one episode and we haven't really promoted it. I, I don't think it got uh, much attention, uh, but uh, we had a call with Chris uh, uh, and Tyler yesterday, and we briefly talked about what we should do. And we're working on defining types of episodes we should be doing. Like there could be episode about like 10 minute interview with Shannon, like what she does in for an OI and what she does in task VT and just introducing her as a member or there could be a call with, uh, you know, Daniel Kahneman, uh, the person who is um, 
highly involved with all the you know knowledge retrieval systems and just talking through discovery engine concept philosophically or practically and there could be a call with someone from i don't know municipalities or policymakers or epidemiologists and we just need to reduce the scope and define what type of episodes we want to create because it's absolutely possible to just you know crank them out we we just need to define what those are sounds to me like each of those would be interesting and then you wouldn't get stuck in one mold if you if you only chose one of those categories yeah yeah but anyway there, there's practically infinite amount of types of episodes that we can create these are the ones that uh, we just discussed yesterday i i believe there are many more so if any wants to participate in that I think I'll create an actual public channel because right now it's it's a private one and I'll call it team podcast and feel free to join and just brainstorm with us by the way I, I listened to the first episode when it came out because I, I'm a bit of a tech podcast fiend uh, anyway <coughs> so um, yes I, I enjoyed it very much uh, and I was kind of hoping actually that it would keep up because um, like the YouTube videos are good but I don't subscribe to YouTube, like the professional service. So I can't like listen to that while I'm getting ready or driving somewhere or something. I, but I can listen to Spotify. So if I, for instance, wanted to catch up on learning about more technical background behind what Discovery Engine is doing, I would go to the podcast for that, or at least I would want to. So I think it, it, it can be nice also for other people in the organization because it, it can be really hard to stay caught up, especially when this isn't your full-time job. Um, Throwing, throwing that out there. Uh, yeah, and audio is generally much more approachable in terms of con consumption versus a video calls. And whenever it's more structured, which podcasts are typically uh, are, you know, more structure and less, um, you know, noise, that, that helps knowledge propagation too. All right. Cool. Well, so I think the last to... thing to discuss today, maybe if, uh, if Daniel could, um, you know, talk a little bit more in terms of the communications, uh, like how, how we're tackling the actual like external communications and what's, what's our uh, big thing in that department. There's a couple pieces I can talk to you. I haven't been as involved in the day-to-day -day communications in the last while, so Shannon may actually have a better bead on that than I. <laughs> no, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> the, the, key, the key things that we really need. No pressure. That's right. The key things that we really need, we need somebody who can be taking point with sponsors. Um, we have a whole sheet that lists a bunch of the different sponsors. You know, Slack is one of the ones that, that we've, we've been nudging along, but that we need to, to figure something out there. Uh, we have a few others that are prospective sponsors who we need to be getting in touch with, but simply someone who can go through that Trello board, look at the pieces that are there and try to move as many of them forward as we can would be amazing. Um, a few of us are preparing for the, uh, the Gitma conference that is coming up on uh, information management. So that's another piece that's kind of going on in terms of the outbound communications. Oh yeah, we never talked about that on daily calls. Yeah. So maybe it's worth actually like introducing what is that and like what is happening because that's very cool yeah um so do you want do you want to tell a little bit about that Arthur? yeah so we we got invited to speak at, at the actual academic conference on information management and deliver a, a one uh one and a half hour workshop on what's happening in corona y and why it exists and why it still exists and yeah, uh, should be very, very fascinating topic. Yeah. Um, which, which conference is this? Uh, it's, it's, it's a, an IT management conference called Gitma. Git, sorry, how do you spell that? Uh, there we go, I just put the link in there, G-I-T-M-A.org. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, that'll be interesting. That's gonna be us talking about sort of the, the, the meta side of things. So rather than um, specifically the stuff on, on Corona, though that'll, that'll be coming up. Um, we'll be looking at, um, at the self-organizational side and generally the organizational side. How are we doing things here and what are the lessons that we're learning about how a, a flash organization or anything of this kind can be put together. Um, and it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty interesting. The closest anyone's described to the kind of thing we're doing was some folks in Stanford in 2017, but the approach that we're taking is really quite different from what they were doing. So, uh, so it, it should be an interesting uh, conversation that we have there. Um, we also have a, um, we just got an invitation today in 
for doing like a quick 10 to 15 minute uh, conversation as part of a, a meetup in France uh, around uh, data that's going on. Um, and so uh, Isaac, I, we were, we were going to check, I messaged and wasn't sure if you're able to, but if you're interested, uh, we'd love to have you give kind of a presentation and, and, and chat there and I can put you in touch with the organizer if you like. Sure, that definitely sounds interesting. Yeah, yeah, I just saw it a bit ago. I assume though it's in it's is in English because the whole website's in French and stuff, right? We'll double check. I'm sure that it can be presented in English, but uh, but we'll double check on that. Okay. Yep, that sounds good. Right, and then we have a few other um, really for for doing that external communication. The key thing we need right now is getting that products and services page together because that's the thing that when we're trying to talk to talk to members of government or talk to other people who are doing some high level organization around COVID. Um, we need to be able to give them a quick, easy synopsis of what it is that we're actually doing that's relevant to them. And, and so that really has to be the place where we have that. We've got some great stuff on there from VT and from a couple of the other teams, um, but, but the more we can flesh that out, the better. Um, we do also have a couple of things in the works um, where we're in discussion with a group that is working on a national pandemic plan. And it'll probably be another couple of weeks before we have much to say around that, but, but it is one of the things that's in the works. Um, and we're going to be touching base again with a couple of other people who are in um, at least one other government um, to, to just give them a little bit of an update and to tell them what, what, what we're up to and, and find out what's going on. With it. Again, some of the ones like that we can't talk too much about yet, but. Actually, a quick question about why can we not discuss that? Um, great question. So in some cases, it's because the, it, it, I mean, it's always out of respect for the other people and for what may be involved um, in, in government and or politics, which for some of the people both are heavily involved. Um, we need to make sure that we don't blunder around in the China shop of nuance that they need to be working in, in order to make everything happen. So it would be really easy for us to accidentally disclose the wrong thing or frame things in the wrong way. Or give an opportunity for people to interpret that thing in the wrong way, which is yeah. equally possible. And, you know, and for anyone that is watching this video, there might be a conflict, right? Like we all came here to be radically transparent. Everything is on YouTube and like, come on, like it's, it's radically transparent. But the reality is that we can be as transparent as possible internally, but externally we have to adjust and integrate into reality. And unfortunately our world is not that transparent as of right now. And there are plenty of situations where our radical transparency could um, inflict some uh, structural damage or um, you know, some things going into the wrong direction. And that's why we have to comply with the reality of the world and integrate into it seamlessly until we reach that you know, new world, hopefully sometime soon, that is radically transparent. And, and, and even within that, there's always that piece where um, seasons timing is a critical thing. And there are times when something needs to like, well, let's think about this for a second. And there has to be some stuff that's prepared before something is ready to be, to be shared. But, but yeah, I think, I think it really is an interesting thing looking at that interface because, because I think we do solidly believe here in, that, in, in that, that radical transparency piece. And we also need others to be comfortable sharing stuff in as, as quick and realistic and pragmatic a way with us as possible. So if hypothetically there was someone from a certain group who had to say like, look, our organization, here's some of the things you have to know about how we're working and here's some of the places where we kind of fall down and you need to know that in order to navigate things with our organization. Um, that, that would be the kind of thing that would be harder for them to say if they knew that, that was then going to be out on a public call. Okay. Thank you for saying some words about that. All right. Well, we are we are slightly over by four minutes, which I'm kind of pleased about since it was uh, I thought it was going to be a pretty uh, low attended meeting. Um, do we have any last words before we ring off for the day? All right, already. thank you so much everyone for hey. coming and uh, for those of us uh, in the US, happy Memorial Day. Hey, thanks, yeah. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.